Let's get more on this from Trita Parsi, who's the executive vice president at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. He joins us now live from Reston, Virginia. Trita, great to have you with us. I want to start Thank by you. getting your reaction to this deal. Well, I mean, it is an annexation plan. It is not a peace plan. It is not going to survive more than the couple of weeks that it will be discussed in the media. This is not just Trump negotiating the capitulation of the Palestinians. It's actually also Trump negotiating the capitulation of the United States to Netanyahu uh, and his expansionist demands. Ultimately, this will not be good for the region, nor will it be good for the United States, because this will sow the seeds of further conflict in the region, more instability, and ultimately there will be elements that will be blaming this on uh, the Trump administration for having created this path to the continuation of the conflict in the first place. Trita, both the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his opposition rival Benny Gantz have both said that they would impl implement it, um, you know, if, if and when elected. Obviously, there's a impending Israeli election around the corner. Uh, what are the what's the fallout from that? If if in fact that they do go ahead with this deal. Well, it is a unilateral uh, plan in that sense, because how can you actually have a peace negotiation without engaging both parties of the conflict? And ultimately, I think I, we have to admit this is the logical conclusion of American primacy in the region, uh, in the sense that this did not start with Trump. For decades now, the United States has essentially enabled uh, the Israelis to further uh, annex and build settlements, this settlement to annexation process. Uh, with very little resistance. And that's the same thing for the Europeans. They may have resisted a little bit more, but ultimately they have acquiesced. What Trump has done here is that instead of taking one more incremental step on that journey, he has just cut to the chase and gone to the final conclusion of it. But this is where we would have ended up anyways, had it actually not been, uh, if there wasn't some form of a shift in the manner in which the United States approaches this issue and approaches the region as a whole. How damaging is it, Trita, to the, the two states, uh, to a two state solution in general, to the prospects of peace? And essentially, I mean, how many regional leaders are truly supporting this? It's not entirely clear how many are supporting. We have seen a shift, uh, which is part of the reason I think Netanyahu sees this opportunity in which countries such as Saudi Arabia, the UAE, have shifted their position on this issue um, and are much more focused on Iran than they are on the Palestinian issue. Uh, and this is something, obviously, that Netanyahu wants to capitalize on. This is, of course, a lot about of this is about domestic politics. It's domestic politics for Trump, who needs this type of a support as he's facing impeachment, as he's facing new elections in a couple of months. And this is obviously even more critically important for Netanyahu's domestic political situation, both facing not only elections, but also uh, potential uh, criminal charges against him. So we cannot erase that. If this was truly about peace in the region, if it was truly about advancing the U.S. interests and stability, this is not the type of a proposal that would have been put forward. All right, Trita Parsi, really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for being with us.